This is a laptop I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on. Dell have finally re-released the Alienware M17 range. Now this laptop was announced months ago at CES, but Dell have only just made this available for sale. So I bought the top-end Ryzen 6900HX CPU, along with the RTX 3070 Ti GPU. And that's also going to allow me to compare it against my own personal X17 R2 that I reviewed a little while ago. So if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and that will be coming shortly. So in this video, we're going to unbox and give my first impressions on this beast of a laptop. We're going to take a look at its internals, and we're going to play some games to see how well it actually performs. Let's open her up. Now, with the M17 range, it's very different from the X17 with the actual box that they provide it with. As you can see, we've got a much smaller box, whereas with the X17, we had a box within a box. And this has got a handle. If I just open it up, take a look inside, and see what else we've got in this side of the actual box. So in here, we've got the UK power cable, and we've got the Dell 240 watt power brick. Now, unfortunately, with the M series range, we're still getting the old fashioned power brick. Now, that's a real shame because this M17 R5 is a very pricey laptop. Now, I'm sure this is Dell early adopter tax and they will reduce the price of this, but considering this is so close in price to the X17 R2, they should have at least given us the new power supply. We've got the laptop itself wrapped in cellophane. We'll open that in a second. We've got a little thank you for joining Alienware cards, a very small guide to how to turn on and use the laptop, safety regulations, more safety information, and that's pretty much it. No Alienware stickers. How tight is that, Dell? And just lastly, a little print in the box which is telling us that this is 100% recycled plastics. So it is nice that Dell are trying to do their bit to keep it, to keep the waste products down. And whilst I'm opening up this laptop, I just wanted to mention We've actually turned on the thank you button within YouTube. So if you wish to support our work and help support our channel, it's always greatly appreciated. All right, let's get on in to this laptop. Now the cellophane is a nice little touch, but it's not like an Apple and this isn't easy to get into like an Apple product, but it keeps the laptop safe. So here we go, get rid of the rubbish. And there she is in all her glory the new M17 R5. Now with the M17 R5, unlike the X series, this only comes in dark side of the moon. So you can see we've got the sort of almost like gun metal or sort of light sort of graphite color of this actual laptop. We've got the 17 embossed on the top and the usual lit anywhere head on the back. Let's take a quick look at the ports. On the right side, we've got two USB-A ports. And on the left side, we've got a headset jack and an ethernet port. And if we move to the rear of the laptop, not only do we have the Tron ring and the rear vents, we've also got the power jack, the HDMI 2.1, another USB type A port, and a Thunderbolt 4 port. Now, as you can see, it's quite hot in here today, so I am gonna get some sort of greasy fingerprints on it. It does clean off reasonably easy, but they do sort of stay in the laptop. Let's open it up and take a look. Now, as we can see on the actual deck of the machine, We've got our Ryzen sticker because this is obviously a Ryzen laptop. Now in the future, Dell will be releasing an all AMD edition of this laptop. But when I've spoken to Dell recently, they said that's gonna actually be a few months away yet, which is why we've got the Ryzen CPU and the RTX GPU in here. When they do release the all AMD edition, we will be getting one of those into test as well. Now looking at the palm rest, you can see this is very much like the M15 R7 or R5 and 6, in, but slightly increased in size. So we've got a little bit more extra space either side of the keyboard, but we've got the same Alienware keyboard that we've got on all of this year's models and last year's models. This is a lovely keyboard to type on. The only problem as we've said with every other keyboard, the secondary functions aren't backlit. That is a real shame. And the cursor keys are crushed into the keyboard. But other than that, this has got to be one of my favorite gaming laptop keyboards. Now the touchpad is actually a decent size on this one feels nice and sturdy, there's no looseness in the touchpad, quite premium, certainly more premium than the M15 laptop, but not quite as nice a feeling as the X17. We've got the usual soft touch finish on the palm rest, it does pick up fingerprints but it does also clean off easily, but it feels great when you're leaning your hands on the palm rest. Now I'm going to just power this up, set up Windows 11 and we're going to come back and take a look at the screen and the speakers, and then we're going to look at the internals. Okay, so we're fully set up into Windows 11, 
And as you can see, we've got the beautiful RGB on the keyboard, which is per key. I've got it set to the lovely rainbow wave. We've got the usual alien head power button, which is uh, amber because I'm currently on battery. And it's uh, blue when you're fully charged on mains and flashes amber and blue when you're sort of charging. A feature I love about these Alienware laptops. Across the top of the keyboards, we've got the air intake like we've got in all the other X and M series over the last couple of years. Speakers are down firing and they sound like this. Speaker test of the M17 R5 at 80% volume. So there we go, it does get very loud, but they're not the best speakers with regards to quality. Now moving up to the screen, I've just got the base panel, 165Hz 1080p. It's a pretty good panel, it's quite responsive. It's just a pity that there isn't any other options. I would have loved a QHD panel, and I would love the 4K panel like I've got on my X17. We've basically got a choice of just the 165Hz or the 360Hz panel. And because I've bought the base panel, there is no Windows Hello facial recognition on this model. So you will have to type your password to get in. If you want that Windows Hello facial recognition, you're going to have to upgrade the screen to the 360Hz panel. There's a webcam and microphones at the top and they look and sound like this. And this is what the webcam and the microphones look and sound like on the Anywhere M17 R5. And as we look around the laptop, you can see we've got the lit alien heads on the back of the screen. Again, that could be RGB. I've got this set to the rainbow wave theme at the moment. And the Tron ring on the back of this M17 R5 is the same as previous M series laptops. It looks very nice, but it's not quite as bright and vibrant as the X series. Now closing the lid and taking a look at this chassis, feels very solid. Not noticed any creak or flex with this model. There was a little bit on the M15 series, the M15R7 and the M15R6, but this model seems pretty solid. There's no creaking when you're opening and closing the laptop. So one hand opening, you can do it, but you've got to be a bit careful because it's quite a heavy hinge. But the advantage of that is that you're not going to get any wobble on the screen. It is really solid. And also being in a 17 inch, it's pretty hefty and it's quite large. So you're going to need a reasonable size 17 inch backpack for this. Now we've tested the Anywhere Horizon range and this will fit in those range of bags. So if you're worried about a bag that will fit, check out our Anywhere Horizon reviews. And with the weight of this laptop, it's 3.3 kilograms. So quite hefty, but you know, not unusual for a 17 inch gaming laptop. Opening the laptop is very straightforward. There's just eight screws. The two corner screws at the front are captive. And as you start unscrewing those, it starts popping the lid away, making it very easy for you to then pry the lid off. Now, once we're inside, you can see we've got a lovely 97 watt hour battery. We will be testing that in the full review. Now, we've got removable DDR5 RAM dims here. Now, I've only got two eight gigabytes because I've got 16 gigabyte configured. Here's our primary Gen 4 SSD, which in my case is a Samsung one terabyte, but we do have a secondary over here. And what is very nice with Dell this year, and they don't always do this, is they've actually given us the heatsink. Now, if you watch the original M15R5 video, that was something they were completely missing. Not only the heatsink, but also the bracket as well, so you couldn't install a second SSD. But as you can see here, everything is in place for you to pop a second drive in. Now, as per all the other Alienware laptops, the motherboard is inverted. So if you do want to repaste, you are gonna to have to take the entire motherboard off. And just lastly, the Wi-Fi card is socketed, so if you do wish to change that in the future, that's a nice and easy job there. So I won't be covering benchmarks in this unboxing and first impressions, but I did want to test a couple of games. So firstly, just want to discuss the actual components in here. Now, obviously this is the Ryzen 9 6900HX processor, and we've also got a 150 watt TGP 3070Ti. Now that's the maximum TGP and the same that's in the X17R2. Now also, with this model, we have Advanced Optimus, and for this game, I did switch to the dedicated NVIDIA mode. Now running Apex, it was incredibly smooth on this laptop. I did enable the performance mode, but I don't even know if that was necessary. Now, with these Anywhere laptops, they are controlled by a command center, but now by pressing the F1 button, you can enable the actual performance mode, so it's a lot easier than opening up the command center. Now in performance mode, fans were about 54 decibels, but it felt comfortable because it was a constant hum and the gameplay was absolutely solid. Now, if you're looking at the temps on the CPU, you'll see it's usually around the sort of late 60s to early 70s, 
And that's really quite incredible. And the GPU is also in the early 70s. And when we're pushing up to 150 watts on that GPU and 30 to 50 watts on the actual CPU, having those temps is really quite impressive, especially after all the 12th gen Intel laptops we've been looking at. All of those were hitting about 100 degrees centigrade. So overall, with just the first couple of games that I've tested, this is a lovely little package. Ryzen really does shine when it comes to the temperatures. Now, please make sure you subscribe if you want to see the full review, and in that we will be covering all the benchmarks, and we will be looking at the battery life and a few other bits and pieces on this laptop. And as always, pop your comments down below. I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching.